Come in. Welcome. I'm E.G. Marshall, dean of this college of macabre knowledge. We are told that we should forgive our enemies, but nowhere are we told that we should forgive our friends. A pity. How easily we recognize those who would destroy us through evil motives. How difficult to perceive those who will ruin us for love. But why is this so surprising? Isn't the road to hell paved with good intentions? So you see, my dear, we're talking about at least uh, $3 million. And that's why you hired me. So I could cheat Mr. Gillespie. Oh, no, cheat is a harsh word. But it's true. And w- what will you do with me afterwards? Why, uh, we shall give you your share. Won't you just kill me? The way you killed everybody else? We killed the others because they forced our hand. Give us no motive, and we'll let you live. Aren't you afraid I'll go to the police? No, because we will have evidence to show that you were the one who poisoned Mrs. Daimler. But that's a lie. Oh, I don't want any part of this. Oh, my dear Miss Watson, what are we proposing? Only to make you fabulously wealthy. Why are you being so difficult about it? Our mystery drama, Person to be Notified, was written especially for the Mystery Theater by Sam Dan and stars Mercedes McCambridge. What is love? That's the oldest question in the world. And why? Because no one has ever been able to answer it to the universal satisfaction. Therefore, we keep asking and asking. There is a young man named James Morton. There is a young lady named Sarah Watson. They have nothing in common. They meet by chance. And... If they will fall in love in our story, they will be completely unaware of it until, well, we're still almost an hour away from the answer, so let us begin at the beginning. James Morton is the manager of an employment agency. Please sit down. Have you uh, filled out the application, Miss... Uh... Miss Watson. Uh, oh, yes, I, yes, I see. Sarah Watson. Hmm? You were previously a secretary for Sarah Valentine, Inc., Hmm. Oh, why'd you leave? Oh, the company went bankrupt. Oh, yeah, well, that's, um... Uh, oh, two years of college, that's all to the good. Well, uh, I, unfortunately, there, there's very little uh, stirring at this particular time. Uh, Are you saying that uh, you have nothing for me? Well, not at the moment, perhaps. Well, you know how things are, job-wise. Uh, we'll hold your application on file, and if... Thank you. Goodbye. Uh, uh, one moment. You you didn't fill out the application completely. I'm sure I did. Well, no. You you see the last line where, where it says "person to be notified." Yes. Yeah. You you left that blank. I know. Uh, <laughs> we have a rule at this agency: all forms must be fully filled in. Fully filled in. Almost sounds like a song. Uh, <laughs> there's a state regulation to that effect. So, would you mind putting down the name of uh, someone? I can't. Why not? Because uh, I don't have anybody. Oh, well, that... That's... That's what? It's... Well, everybody has somebody to notify. Well, I don't. Are you saying you have no family? No friends? I'm saying there's no one I would care to notify in the event that something happened to me. I find that difficult to believe. I am all alone in the world. Well, no one is that alone. I am. Goodbye. But uh, you must fill out the form. Uh, oh, all right. What is your name? James Morton. All right, James Morton. There you are. 
But you can't put my name down. Why not? Well, because it, it, it has to be someone who knows you. Right now, you know more about me than anybody else. You know my name, my age, my address. But it has to be someone you know. I know you as well as I know anyone. But, miss, miss, it has to be someone who means something to you. No one means more to me than you do. Well, uh, I really need a job, Mr. Morton. I'll take anything. I'll go anywhere. So, uh... If anything at all comes up, please call me, huh? Goodbye. Uh, Miss Miss Watson, uh, just a minute. Did you say you'd go anywhere? Anywhere at all. There, there may be a job. Okay. But the reason I didn't think to mention it before is you, you appear, you know, to be a very attractive young lady. Uh, uh yes. And so, therefore, I'd naturally assume that you'd be unwilling to, uh, I guess the word is bury yourself on a small private island off the coast of northern Maine. And why did you make that assumption? I, well, looking at you, I would assume that you would have a very active, busy social life here in the city. And... I could leave today. One of the qualifications for this job is is that the lady must have no um, ties or connections. I'm qualified. As I understand it, an elderly gentleman is writing a book. He requires a secretary. It, it would be rather dull. Most jobs are. And he wouldn't want a young lady who would be bored after a while and quit. Well, I couldn't afford to quit. Mm-hmm. Well, aren't you going to ask how much the job would pay? I would expect it to pay as much as my last one. Mm-hmm. Uh, the gentleman's attorney is here in town interviewing applicants. I must say he's having difficulty finding someone. His name is Mr. Carberry. May I ask if your hair is naturally red, Miss Watson? And may I ask what business it is of yours, Mr. Carberry? Well, your prospective employer, Mr. Gillespie, is a rather conservative gentleman who becomes upset at uh, changes. Well? And you, young ladies of today, you're constantly altering your appearance. And Mr. Gillespie would find that uh, disconcerting. Well, I shall do nothing to uh, disconcert Mr. Gillespie. I notice you're wearing a dress, Miss Watson. Yes. I believe it's the prescribed female attire. I know, only at dinner in the evening. In the daytime at Rotherwood. Young ladies are expected to wear... Oh, are there other young ladies? Oh, no, no. You'll be the young lady. And Mr. Gillespie is accustomed to seeing young ladies attired in uh, shirtwaists and skirts. <laughs> shirtwaists? Well, I believe you would call them... Hey, well, I don't think I have any. Well, then you'll be supplied with some. You see, Miss Watson, Mr. Gillespie lives in the past. He chooses to isolate himself on his estate and create a, an ambience of a bygone era. When young ladies wore shirtwaists. Precisely. Now, if you're afraid that might prove dull... Oh, or... no, 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 really, I have no objection. I'm not looking for excitement. One other question. I asked the agency, of course, to screen out of applicants, but... One should always double-check for oneself. Have you any relatives? No. They're alone in the world? Completely. Now, the salary, you will admit, is rather generous. We will pay you 15000 a year, plus room, board, and expenses. I will require you to sign a two-year contract. Do you object? Not at all. Well, then, it's settled. Can you leave on the 15th? I can leave sooner. Oh, well, you'll need the time. Now, here's a check for $1,000. You'll have to purchase a suitable wardrobe. Oh, what are all those papers? Well, this is a list of the clothes you should buy to guide you on color and style. And um, here are some photographs. Oh. Oh, I, 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 I don't think any of this is uh, my taste. But then again, none of it is to be bought with your money. I see. Well, we shall all get along just splendidly. Now, 9 o'clock the morning of the 15th, you'll go to the airport to gate 116. Mr. Gillespie's private plane will be waiting for you. How does that square with his old-fashioned attitude? <laughs> it's the only concession he makes to reality. You do not like the arroz con pollo, Senor Morton? Oh, oh, yes, it's, it's fine. But you have not eaten a bite. I have been watching you. You seem to be a thinker tonight. Yes, sir. 
young lady came into my office looking for a job today, and she filled out the usual form in the usual way, and, until she came to the last line. Uh, you know what the last line requires her to state? No. It, it asks her to list the person to be notified in case of, uh, well, you know, in, in case of. Yeah, I, I know. Well, she said she had no one to notify. I, I couldn't believe it. Why is it so difficult to believe? Well, because, because everybody has someone, a relative, a close friend. Everyone? Well, of course, everyone. Do you, Senor Morton? Do you? Uh, how do you ask such a question? How do you answer it? You come in here almost every night for dinner. Also, on many a Sunday afternoon, you come alone. So, you do not live with a family. You are not married. It is obvious you are not keeping company with a young lady. So, who is there for you to notify? Well, uh, my partner. Why do you say, well... Didn't you say my partner? Well, because outside of the business, we don't know each other. We don't see each other. He's a much older man. We have nothing in common except the fact we seem to be able to, you know, run a profitable business. If, and I pray it shall never come to pass, you should meet with a misfortune, who would grieve for you? Who would miss you? Well, now that I think of it, Senor Spinola, if, uh, if I had to fill out that form, I would put down your name. <laughs> <laughs> Tell me about the young lady uh, whose name did she finally put down? Well, she insisted she didn't know anyone. I said we had to have someone, so she wrote down my name. Ah, and she fell in love with you. <laughs> That's ridiculous. Why else would she write your name down? Well, because, because she had to write down something and I was sitting there. No, Senor Morton, no. She looked at you and suddenly her heart was lost. Oh, Come on. She may not know this yet, but that is why she wrote your name. <laughs> These are to be your quarters. Oh. Oh, my, it's lovely. Well, thank you, Mrs. Daimler. I'm sure I'll be very happy here. Are you? Of course. I, I expected a room, but this is the whole suite. Now, don't let it go to your head. Well, I... I did, uh... Did they say you were to have dinner in the main hall tonight? Well, frankly, I... Now, don't be frank with me. Because I'm not going to be frank with you. Well, what do you... I don't understand. I'm telling you right off. I'm not on your side. Side? I don't know anything about sides. I, I, I just got here. Yeah. When you've got big eyes... And they can get very round. But I don't think it'll help you any more than it helped all the other girls. What other girl? Oh, coming here now. I hear his steps in the corridor. Who's coming? Pontius Pilate. Who? Ah, welcome to Rotherwood, Miss Watson. I see you've met our Mrs. Daimler, probably the best housekeeper in the entire state. Now, will you excuse us, Mrs. Daimler? Is she going to eat in the Great Hall tonight? Ah, uh, no. Ah, uh, yeah, I can see why. She isn't ready yet. I believe that will be all, Mrs. Daimler. I give her a You week. are excused, Mrs. Daimler. She'll get wise to you. The old man will get Mrs. wise Daimler. to Mrs. Daimler! All right, all right. I'm leaving. Well, did you have a pleasant flight? Yes. Find your quarters satisfactory? Oh, very. We uh, want you to be comfortable. Uh, will you answer a question, Mr. Carver? Well, of course. Would you tell me just what is going on around here anyhow? What indeed? Now, you must admit we've given you several basic facts to chew on. For instance, why would they want a girl who has no ties at all? Why are they offering such an attractive salary? Who is Mrs. Daimler? Who's the old man? What sides are there in conflict here? Well, in the first act, you present. In the second, you unfold. And I shall take you into my confidence after your announcer takes you into his. Why 
Why would a girl, an attractive, desirable girl, cut herself off from all social opportunities and take a job in a mansion on an island off the coast of Maine? Why would her employer insist on a girl whose absence would, in effect, cause no concern to anyone? Well, that's how jobs are filled, no? By employers and employees who fill each other's needs. Mr. Carberry, tell me, what is going on around here? Why did Mrs. Daimler say I wasn't ready? Ready for what? Oh, you must listen to what Mrs. Daimler says. Mrs. Daimler implied that there was a whole series of girls hired before me. Ah, yes. Unfortunately, none of them proved satisfactory. Why? The job will require infinite delicacy and uh, tact. Describe the job. You're to help Mr. Gillespie with his book. When do I meet Mr. Gillespie? <laughs> Miss Watson, Mr. Gillespie must be humored at all times. Well, I'm not sure I, I'm willing to... It's part of your job. Now, when you are introduced to him, he will call you Regina. Why? Because that's who he will think you are. Again, why? Because you look like Regina. Regina who? A Miss Regina Trumbull. Tell me, Mr. Carberry, is that why I was hired? Yes. Well, I think I should like to leave at once. You signed a contract. I can't be held to that contract. I wasn't aware of all the facts. You signed a contract to be Mr. Gillespie's secretary. That's the only fact. Then why must I pose as Miss Regina Trumbull? To make it possible to perform your duties. You see, Mr. Gillespie could only feel comfortable with Miss Regina Trumbull. Well, then why not hire Miss Trumbull? She uh, died many years ago. Then how can you make Mr. Gillespie Oh, believe... Mr. Gillespie has never been able to accept the fact of her death. You're not... You're not up to anything illegal here, are you? Oh, oh I assure you. Everything is completely above board. You got a minute, Frank? Yeah, sure. You, you remember that girl uh, we sent up to Maine? Huh? Oh, yeah, that was a good commission. A lot of dough for just a secretary. Yeah, that, that's what bothers me. Well, why should it bother you? Now, why should they want to pay so high? Well, it is way up at the end of nowhere. Well, well even so, throw in room, board, expenses, it's worth another 5000 20000 for a secretary? Well, why is that our business? Yeah, and why did they insist on a girl who's all alone in the world? Well, the man's got a right to set up the requirements if he's willing to pay the prices. Frank, if that girl were to disappear... Who would know about it? Why would she disappear? I, I'm, I'm only speculating. Well, why? The girl's gone, isn't she? We're through with her. That's hardly the way to put it. Oh, what other way is there? Look, you and you and me, we've been partners close to ten years. Now, we've been pretty successful. Why? We have nothing to do with each other outside of the office. But for the first time, I'm going to say something personal to you. Get married. Get married. You don't have anything against women, do you? No. Well, then get married. It's economical. It's practical. And you won't have to make up fantasy stories about every good-looking dame who walks in here. Ah, oh, good morning, Miss Watson. Good morning. I'm sure you slept well. The ocean air here is so invigorating. As a matter of fact, I slept poorly. Oh, no, I'm sorry. Why? This morning, before breakfast, I went for a walk. Ah, now, that's an excellent practice. We're on an island, completely out of sight of the coast. Of course. Privacy is essential for Mr. Gillespie. And the only way off is by boat. There are several boats tied up to a dock, and a man is there, and he has a gun. Oh, yes, that's our Mr. Spencer. And I told him... That I wanted to take a boat out for a while. Why did he refuse me? Those are his orders. Why? You'll understand them in time. And then, when I returned to the house, I picked up the telephone. Did you? Yes. I wanted to call the sheriff and tell him that I'm being held here. But I couldn't get an outside line. I know. There's only one outside line, and it's locked. Am I 
Am I a prisoner? Oh, of course not. Then why do you refuse to let me leave? You will leave at the proper time. And when will that be? When the job is finished. Then how can you say I'm not a prisoner? Oh, my dear young lady, the job has certain conditions. Why weren't they explained to you? They were stated in the contract. It's no one's fault but yours if you didn't read it. And suppose I refuse to perform any service. That would not be in your best interests. I would advise you to do as you're told. Or else? Oh, now, why do you insist on proposing all these hypothetical conditions? Well, if we're finished with breakfast, would you care to meet Mr. Gillespie? It uh, says here on your application that you worked for Starrett Valentine, Miss Collins. Until they went busted. I should have seen the handwriting on the wall, but you know, they offer this uh, profit sharing and pension plan. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Uh, what's the difference? It's all down the drain now. Yeah. Would you, uh, did you know a uh, Miss Sarah Watson? Sarah? Oh, sure. Mm. Well, what type of person was she? I don't know. I mean, she worked the next desk to mine for five years, but I, I never got to know her. Why not? But the rest of the girls and I, we figured it out finally. She was a loner. A loner? Well, there are some people in this world, they're just loners. They won't or they can't make friends, you know? Uh, yeah, I know. Well, I had to bring her form over to personnel. And you know that place where it says, person to be notified? Yeah. Well, she left it blank. So I reminded her and she said she had no family. Was it true? Well, yeah, I guess. And she had no friends that anybody knew. I don't know, some people just can't seem to reach out and connect with other people. Maybe it's the way they were brought up or weren't brought up. You know what I mean? Yeah. I know exactly what you mean. And now, Miss Watson, you are to agree with everything Mr. Gillespie says. Do you understand? Oh, good morning, sir. Good morning. Look who's here. Regina. You always say you found Regina. You're always wrong. Oh, no, this time it is Regina, Mr. Gillespie. Look, you see, she's come back. Is it? Is it finally Regina? At last? Can there be any doubt of it? Can you mistake that brilliant red hair? Regina. Regina, speak to me. Oh, sir. (laughs) You mustn't call me, sir. Sir, listen. Yeah, I, I realize you're angry with me. And and you had reason to be. Sir, uh, something is going on here. And I don't know what it is. Regina, you know you mustn't make Mr. Gillespie angry. I'm not Regina. Sir, this man here is trying to do something to you, which I know must be illegal. Oh, yes. Yes. That's my Regina, all right. A pretty head. Filled with all kinds of romantic nonsense. Sit, 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 sit. We'll, we'll talk for a moment. But don't you understand? I understand everything. Now, you will not leave me again. Promise. Even if I should be mean to you. Promise. Now, you must promise. Well, go ahead, Regina. Promise. Regina, I shall be very much displeased. And perhaps I shall not let you have the diamonds after all. Now, you must promise. Very well. You shall sit here until you promise. I, uh... I'll stay here until you finish the book. The book? Oh, the book. Well, I, I know you. You know, I'll never write that book. I, I delude myself. Well, I caught you. If you stay here till I finish the book, then you'll stay here forever. Where is everybody this evening, Mrs. Daymire? Do you miss them? No. 
Mr. Carberry has got some business to tend to, and the old man's tired, so uh, we aren't going to have a big formal dinner. Uh, listen, I was wrong about you. Oh? I heard how you spoke to the old man this afternoon. I didn't notice you. Oh, I get to hear everything. You're all right. You aren't in on it. In on what? Whatever it is, Carberry's got in mind. And the other girls who came here, they must have been willing to go along. What do you mean by going along? Look, I've been working here 30 years. Now, maybe, well, 10 years ago, Mr. Carberry gets to be the old man's lawyer. Suddenly, the old man goes crazy. You see him, he's off the deep end. Well, he's denial, isn't he? He must be well over 80. He was a young man the day I came to work here. He was no older than me. He can't even be 60 yet. Oh, but that's hard to believe. Oh, I figured it out. Carberry's got him on some kind of a drug. Oh. Well, what are we going to do? We'll have to get out of here. And how? The boats are locked up. I have a key. Here. Now you take it. What are we going to do? And we'll go to the town, try to talk to the sheriff. Will he believe us? I got a bottle of the drugs that Carberry's been using. He'll have to believe it. Why did you wait so long? I wasn't sure until just now. Now, look, we'll wait till, oh, about midnight. Then you come by my room, and we'll head for the dock. Yes. Yes, you're Regina. I'm sure of it. Do you remember what I said about the diamonds? The diamonds? You don't remember the diamonds? How could you forget the diamonds? Uh, After all, they are your diamonds. Oh, uh, the diamonds, yes. Yes, Mr. Gillespie. Oh, it isn't right for you to call me Mr. Gillespie. After what we've been to each other, I I should think Edmund would be um, proper. Uh, Edmund. Uh, I was wrong about the diamonds. I said a million dollars invested in diamonds would be dead money. Put it in the market. Well, <laughs> as it happened, the diamonds have tripled in value. Uh, just the times, I suppose. Pacina, I... Was you breakfast with me tomorrow and... And I'll explain more about the, the diamonds. I'm so tired now. I just want to get to sleep. Mrs. Daimler. Mrs. Daimler, are you ready? Mrs. Daimler. Mrs. Daimler. Are you all right? Obviously, my dear. What? She is not all right. What, what, what are you doing here? I think poor Mrs. Daimler is dead. I think poor Mrs. Daimler is dead. Notice how Mr. Carberry phrases these things. Well, obviously, she's dead. The question is how and by whose hand. Well, you can expect the unusual to happen on remote islands. Other things are also scheduled to happen when I return to you in just a few moments with Act Three. When you... Watson finds herself virtually alone on a small island off the lonely coast of northern Maine. And the truth, she feels like an island, isolated and alone. But wait, isn't it written that no man is an island? That there is a tie that binds all of us together? Yes, it's written. However, how about those people like Sarah Watson? who have no ties at all, no bonds to anyone. Well, that's what she thinks. But you never know. She's dead. Mrs. Daimler is dead. I was talking to her earlier this evening. How could she... It must have been 
The heart attack. How could a woman with a cardiac condition perform all her duties as a housekeeper? Ah, then, she didn't die of a heart attack. Well, what did she die of? Well, perhaps she died of a very dangerous disease, which I hope is not contagious. What disease? Indiscretion. Well, if it was murder, I'm sure that you killed her. Are you? And you're going to have to call a doctor. Why? To sign the death certificate. Who died? Who died? Mrs. Daimler. Oh, no, no, my dear. She didn't. She left here last week to live with relatives in the far west. But that's ridiculous. Oh, I can prove it. Uh, here's a copy of the local paper dated last week. You see this um, social note right here? You can read it. Mrs. Augusta Daimler for many years, housekeeper to Mr. Edmund Gillespie on Rutherwood Island, has announced her retirement. She is leaving to live with relatives in Oregon. But that... It had become obvious a little while ago that Mrs. Daimler might become a problem. So last week we took the precaution of, uh, well, should we say, being prepared. Oh, you won't get away with this. Get away with what? Now, why don't you get some rest, Miss Watson? You have a busy day tomorrow, and... Oh, yes, Father Byron, may I, um... May I have the key? What key? To the book chain. Uh, let me see. I think I'll have, um... What do you suggest this evening? Nothing. Nothing? It is a sin to waste good food. For the past weeks, you order. I serve. You do not touch. You are in love. I, I, I have a feeling that, that she's in danger. If you have a feeling, then it is true. But I, I don't even know what to do about it. You have no choice. You must save her. You have ground for suspicion? Uh, yes. And you sit here while your loved one is in peril. Uh, who says she's my loved one? Why do you keep thinking about her? Now, I shall feed you enough to arm you for your journey. But, but she's, she's 2,000 miles from here. Ah, love laughs at distance. You see, <laughs> you are smiling already. Go to her. She wrote your name. She calls you. She needs you. A dazzling morning, isn't it, Miss Watson? I watched you and Mr. Spencer and those other men. And I saw you bury Mrs. Daimler. <laughs> at the risk of telling an old joke at a serious moment, we had to. Dead, you know. <laughs> now, what are your plans for me? Oh, that depends on you. What am I supposed to do? Just have Mr. Gillespie go on thinking you're Regina. And what about the diamond? The diamond. Well, you see, Mr. Gillespie was Regina Trumbull's guardian. Her father had entrusted him with a million dollars worth of diamonds to be held for her until her 25th birthday. He uh, fell in love with her, but she died in an accident. He went to pieces after that. He shut himself up on this island and, well, as you can see, he lost his mind. Yes. And I'll tell you what else I see. I see that after a while... He started to get his mind back. But then you came into the picture. And you are making sure that he doesn't recover his sanity. Why would I do that? Because if you could get him to believe that I am Regina, he'll give me those diamonds. And then you can get your hands on them. I must say, Miss Watson, you have an incisive mind. The diamonds are hidden here somewhere. He won't tell you. And you can't force it out of him. So that's why you need me. Oh, yes, you are vital. Vital, meaning alive. How do you know you can trust me? We would make it worth your while. We would give you a considerable sum of money. Why should you do that? Why not just kill me? Miss Watson, I am not in the murder business. I only will commit a crime when I have absolutely no alternative. And how do I know that I can trust you? You have no other route to travel. So you think there's something going on over to Rutherford Island? That's exactly what I think, Sheriff. I must say, 
You don't give much evidence. Not at all, tell the truth. Sheriff, I traveled almost 2,000 miles. On a hunch. Well, what do you want me to do? Find out if she's all right. How? Well, search the place. Son, you've been watching too many movies. You don't trespass all over man's property and turn his establishment inside out. Unless you've got a search warrant. Mm, get a warrant. Tell you what I'll do. Agatha, connect me with Rodwood Island, please. Thank you. Well, what will you accomplish by that? We'll mm. find out where we stand. Oh, hello. Yes, sir. This is Sheriff Tate, to whom I'm speaking. Mr. Carberry? He's the one who interviewed her in New York. Uh, do you have a Miss Sarah Watson working for you? Uh-huh. Yes. D does he deny uh, it? I see. No, no, no. Just uh, routine. Nothing at all. <laughs> I'm much obliged. Thank you. Uh, <clears throat> she ain't there. <sighs> she has to be there. She left. How could she leave? She had a two-year contract. She decided she didn't like the place. Too lonely. When does he say she left? Two days after she arrived. Now, now that's impossible. We would have known about it. She... Why? She quit. She quit, that's all. And she goes on to find another job. How do I know this all ain't a yarn on your part? Why would I lie? It's in style today. How do I know you're who you say you are? But here is my card, and here's a copy of the contract that she signed. Well, son, you let me study this here document. But, but meanwhile, she can Meanwhile, be... it's dark. And if I do decide to go to the island, I can't do it till morning. But, but... Okay, forget it. Thank you very much. <laughs> Notified in case of trouble. Well, you're in trouble, aren't you? Oh, James Morton. Yeah. Oh, yes, yes, yes. I am in trouble. Here I am. How did you know? I, I got a boat. I waited till dark and I sneaked ashore, made it to the house. I walked it through the window and I, I figured out which room was yours. Now, we are going to get out of here. James Morton. Oh, I don't know what to say. <laughs> don't say anything. Let's hurry. It's a miracle. That's what it is. A miracle never happened to me before. Well, to me neither. Well, it's about time. I'm sorry to interrupt. Oh, oh, don't move and don't talk. Mr. Spencer is an excellent shot, and at this range, how can he miss? I think you're finished, Mr. Carberry. That's the sheriff. Why would the sheriff come here? Because I spoke to him earlier. Oh. Ah. Well, then he won't find you here. You'll find my boat. No, Mr. Spencer already has it well hidden. <laughs> and don't scream, Miss Watson. Spencer would shoot you immediately. Now, Mr. Spencer, suppose I see who was at the door. You have your instructions? Why, no, Sheriff. I haven't seen the young man. Funny. I could have sworn he'd have come out here. Well, for what reason? I wouldn't know. You say this Miss Watson left right after she got here? Uh, that's right. We were completely incompatible. How's Mr. Gillespie these days? We never see him. Oh, poor old man. Still completely senile. Yeah. Well, is there um, anything else I can do for you? Yeah. You can produce both the girl and Mr. Morton. Oh, wait a minute, Sheriff. I told Mem you Mem Powers I... told me the young fellow rented a boat off of him just a while back and took off headed this way. Well, I assure you, he never got here. He... Oh, he got here. And the girl's here, too. <laughs> There ain't no one here, huh? No, no, no. Okay, break it up now. Break it up. That man, he tried to use me. Well, looks like Mr. Spencer won't be able to say anything for a while. I jumped at him. He fired. They, 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 they were going to, to kill us. I know. But it's all going to be fine. Uh, Mr. Carberry, where's Mr. He's probably uh, figuring he can make a run for it. But he's got nowhere to go. I left a deputy here on the dock. Why did you... What made you come here, Sheriff? Well, sounded like a wild yarn. Then I read that contract you left me. The one your agency signed with Mr. Carberry. Well, the, the contract, all it defined was what Mr. Carberry owed us in the event we filled his job. It's a, it's a standard agreement. According to the agreement, he had to pay you 6% of $15,000. That's 900 If for any reason the applicant lasts less than a week... 
You'll have to refund him two-thirds of that amount. Now, if Miss Watson left what he claimed after a couple of days, you'd have owed him $600. Well, that's right. You never mentioned he claimed the money. And since you didn't, you assumed she was still here. Now, I don't know how it is down your part of the country, but there ain't one single solitary living soul up in these parts that let $600 sit there whistling. Well, I'll clear things up downstairs and give you a chance to talk to your girl. My... my girl? Belongs to you, don't she? Well, uh... Of course I do. Why else would I have named him as the person to be notified? Department of Loose Ends. An autopsy was performed on Mrs. Damer. It was established that she was poisoned. Mr. Carberry and company will stand trial for that one. Mr. Gillespie was placed in a hospital where with good care and treatment he has a chance to recover all his faculties. At this writing, he still cannot remember where the diamonds are hidden. If I have to tell you what happened to Sarah and James, then you don't have an ounce of romance in your soul and I give up. But only for a few moments. what we were talking about was not jobs or intrigue or murder, even though they were prominently featured. Our theme was loneliness, and it was a tale of so many people who really have no anchor to love and security in our world. And if you are one of the fortunates, if you can fill the space that says person to be notified, then you have the best of this world. If, on the other hand, you really can't fill that space, then go out and change that situation. Our cast included Mercedes McCambridge, Russell Horton, Bryna Rayburn, Ian Martin, and Gilbert Mack. The entire production was under the direction of Hyman Brown. This is E.G. Marshall inviting you to return to our mystery theater for another adventure in the macabre. Until next time, pleasant... Dream.